Hello and welcome to Crafternoon. We are live. Live Crafternoon on Facebook. I am Mr. Zach. I am with the Solvang Library and we are getting ready to craft today. So today we are, it's the race for the treasure. And the, one of the reasons that we're doing this is I don't know if you signed up for the summer reading program yet, but uh, if you have, you'll see that the main theme is dig deeper. And uh, so that got me thinking about, well, we're digging for treasure, and that's kind of what reading is. We're reading for these treasures in these books and uh, in the content that we're, that we're looking for. So that's why I came up with today's craft. So if you haven't signed up for the summer reading program, you can do so on our website, which is galitavalleylibrary.org. And uh, you can, all the sign-up information is there. It's very simple. It's actually a really slick online um, summer reading program this year because the library is not open to foot traffic. Uh, we will be opening to um, walk-up pickup soon, and you'll be getting those notifications. Um, so sign up for the summer reading program. You can log all your reading online and you can get all your rewards online and uh, get your uh, rewards from that. So check that out when you have a sec on golitavalleylibrary.org. So we move on to today's craft, which is the race for the treasure. So here we have something of a treasure map that I've already made. And I'm going to show you how to make this. So this, what we're doing is it's, it's kind of the old battleship game, if you if you know what I'm talking about, and we can do that. Um, and what's really nice about this is we can scale this to any size that we want. And if you're um, work, if you have little ones that you're playing this game with, because it'll be a two player uh, two player game. Uh, once you make the craft, if you have little ones and you don't want to have this many squares or this many things to find, if you want to simplify it, reduce it down. You could make it, you know, six. You know, it'd be three by three, which would be nine squares, and and it, and have one object that you're searching for. So it's very scalable, depending on the 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 little ones that you're working with. So we'll start with all of our here's our all our materials for today. It's kind of it's a good one. We need a pen and some paper, and that's it. Uh, a ruler is handy but you don't have to have one if you don't need one, but I like to do it. A lot of people are like, I can't do crafts. I can't draw a straight line. You know, I, how could I be, uh, do any crafts? It's like, no one can draw a straight line. That's why we have rulers. They're, they're there for a reason. So I've already made one grid. So each player will need two grids. So I'm doing a simple six by six grid and each square is a one inch. So I'm going to start with my bottom. I'll show you this as I progress and we're going to go six inches across the bottom and then we go six inches up each side and see rulers are handy and no shame in using a ruler. So I've started with a six by six inch by six inch box. And then I'm going to take that, take my ruler and I'm going to mark out where each inch is on the interior here. And I'll show you that in one second. And it's just little, little dots along the way. So we're going to do that on both sides and the top and the bottom. So we'll just go around and do all those little dots. Doesn't take much. And if you want to really complicate this, you know, make it as big as you want. Is you know, if you have a really big piece of paper, uh, you can obviously go huge. Um, so if you want to scale this up to you know 12 inches by 12 inches, um, you could you know a standard piece of paper is eight and a half by 11. So eight by eight is a natural that would fit on one piece of paper. Uh, it would make for a more prolonged game. Or if you wanna keep the square small, but have more squ <clears throat> squares within it, then um, instead of doing one inch increments like this, you just do half inch and out of this size, you would get 12 by 12. 
So you can, again, scale it to what you need. So here we go, we've got dots, oops, excuse me, we've got dots all around. And now we're just gonna take our ruler and connect these dots side to side and up and down. I'll show you that. It's just making a grid. Very simple. And actually, and extend it out a little bit on one side. Now I'll we'll show you what I'm doing, what I mean by that. Past the square on, I like the left for me. I will show you that. And that's going to make it easier to create the marks. So like I said, that's what I mean. Extending it out a little bit, just on one side. And now we go top to bottom. And soon we'll be racing each other to find the hidden treasure. And the next bit, the fun part, is deciding what that treasure is. Okay, so here's our grid. And I've, you can see I've extended my lines on the top. And where am I? <laughs> on the side. So now once we have that, looks kind of familiar. We're going to add our numbers to one side and our letters to the other side. So numbers and letters. Okay, so I've made two of these now and they're different. And uh, so you'll see that this one has some objects on it and this one we're gonna leave blank. So this one, both of them we're going to keep secret from our other player but especially this one uh, with our objects on it because this is what they are going to be hunting for and this is the grid where we're going to mark what we've been hunting for. So on one of the grids, you make two of these and then on one of them, you're going to indicate your objects. And for the purpose of this game, because it's the race for the treasure, I chose three objects. A shovel, where is it? A shovel, a key, and the treasure. It doesn't matter which order you find them in, so um, it just matters that you need all three of them in order to have the treasure, because maybe you found the treasure, but you don't have a shovel to dig it up, or maybe you've dug it up, but you don't have the key to get in the box. So it just matters that you have all three. That's how you win, is to have all three objects. So that's on this, so I've designed this for me and again this can be variable depending on who it is that you're playing with maybe it doesn't you don't want it to be a treasure maybe you're making a sandwich so you need bread a slice of cheese and a tomato depending on you know who it is or if it maybe again if it's just one object and that's how you want to play because you're scaling this depending on your imagination and what your what kind of game you feel like playing that day and all you need paper and a pen so we have two grids now. I've made this grid. This is my secret grid. And for a game like this, it's good to have a large book. I didn't grab a large book, but you can pretend that the lid to my craft box is a large book. So I can set this up. And now, as you're playing, you can't, you can see it because it's clear, but you then couldn't see uh, my game pieces, my game boards. So as we're playing secretly. So what we do now, now that we have our two grids, then this is where it gets fun. Once we know what it is that we're searching for, the race to the treasure, what's the treasure that we're racing toward? This is where our imagination gets wild and we get to draw, take another piece of paper and another pen. And if you want to get crafty with glitter and pipe cleaners and construction paper, Go for that. I just drew mine. So if you were playing with me, the treasure that we're searching for is a nice box of donuts. Because doesn't that look delicious? I've never drawn a donut before, but that, that's my favorite right there, the little sprinkly donut. 
that's a blueberry right there if anybody's interested in blueberry so and now it's the lemon my wife got very excited when i drew the lemon one so I, we might be playing this later so that she can try and find my hidden treasure of donuts but you again you and your little one you can do personalize it to whatever you guys treasure. What is it that you want to be searching for in this game? So now that you've tantalized who you're playing against, and you could even hang this on the front of that book that's blocking your, your game boards, just to tantalize them so they know what they're searching for. So once you've told them, then we start the gameplay. So it's a good idea we'll get a different color pen. And... This is an exciting color. So you take your pen, and let's start with the youngest player playing, usually the little one, goes first. And the way you play the game is, I have my blank board here, so I'm trying to imagine what their treasure board looks like. And I'm gonna call a square. I'm gonna say C3. So we go C, three, there it is. So I, and then I'm gonna mark and boom. And then they would look at their treasure grid. So it's as if I'm playing against myself, which is kind of, kind of cheating. C three is empty. So the person would say empty. So I'm gonna mark this as empty. So now I know that I have 35 squares to go. And then they would take their turn. So they say, you know, uh, well, let's say they say D4. So they say D4 and I go, okay, so now I'm going to look at my sheet. D4, that's the shovel. So I say, oh, you found my shovel. So... If I was calling that, I would draw on D4 a little picture of the shovel. So now I know that I found the shovel on D4. And the game continues like that until one player finds all of the objects on the other player's board. And then at that time, the other player has to relinquish the treasure. It goes to whoever wins the game, gets both the treasures. And actually, and if you want to um, change it up a little bit, the treasure could be a scoop of ice cream. You could draw a little scoop of ice cream, and then you, if you win, you both get some ice cream. So that would be nice too. So you could actually have a, an actual treasure drawn that's based on a treasure that's kind of the, the treat for after the game, after the crafts and after the game. So that's it, that's the race for the treasure. It's as simple as that. It's a pen, a ruler, some paper, imagination, a little bit of time. Uh, if you're spending time hanging out, it's a good, uh, it's a good road trip game. Uh, if you're landing in a spot where there aren't a lot of games or something like that, if there's a pad and paper, uh, I'm sorry, a pad and pencil, you can always make this grid. You can just hand draw it. You don't need a ruler. And uh, there it is. If anybody's road tripping these days, uh, it seems like some people are doing more of that. Um, I know a lot of things are opening up, and I hope people are feeling uh, healthy and safe as that's happening. Uh, the library is going to be, like I said, opening up to walk up pickup soon and we're doing it as safely as we can and um, we're keeping us safe and we're keeping you guys safe and we hope that you guys are doing well taking care of yourselves taking care of others and thank you so much for joining me on today's crafternoon i will be back next week crafternoon let's see it is on thursdays at three i'm also doing story time on facebook live that is wednesdays at 10 30 and Go sign up for the summer reading list if you're interested. A lot of nice prizes and uh, great tons of great books online to read through our online resources. And it all starts at golitavalleylibrary.org. And you start there and go from there. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Crafternoon, and I will see you next week. Take care. <laughs>